Hi everyone and welcome to Toes on Tips. Toes on Tips. Welcome to part two of my series about guidebooks. Today I'm going to talk about Japanese guidebooks. As you can see, I have a lot of Japanese guidebooks. To start with, I'll just talk about the th big three of Japanese publishers for mountaineering guidebooks. We have Yamato Keikoku, Shobunsha, and JTB Publishing. Those are kind of the big three. There are also a variety of other smaller publishers. Today I'm just going to talk a little bit about the books that I have and share with you. Feel free to leave a comment below if you have a different series of books. I came to Japan in 2001. This was the very first guidebook that I got. This was Hiking 74 Courses. This is Shobunsha. As you can imagine, this book is no longer in print, probably because of the picture quality and also the map quality isn't the best. But it was a good kind of starting point for my journey into the mountains of Kansai especially. This is a mountain, this is a book for the Kansai area. The second book I got was actually called Hikes That Have Hot Springs Next to Them or Accompanying Them. So this was a book that was put out by Yamato Keikoku and it's out of print as well. But it would give you a, it would give you hikes and recommend hot springs that were near the hikes. I still use this book occasionally, but I've done most of the hikes in here for this series. The next book I got in Kansai was this Kansai 100 Best Day Hikes. And this was probably the first guidebook that I actually finished all 100 hikes in this book. This is on Blue Guide Hiker. It's a local publisher. This is the old version. I think there's an updated version with a different cover. This book is excellent, but the person who wrote this is a serious hardcore hiker and the map and hike times were actually very liberal. If you're a slow hiker, these hikes would actually take you a lot longer than what the maps say it would take. At the same time as getting that book, I got this other one, which is a Kansai area best 120 published by Yamato Keikoku. I believe this one is still in print. And this one, I have finished every single hike except one. There's one that I have left that I've been kind of putting off because most of the hike is on a road and I don't really want to do it. Interesting side note about this book. This is the book that I was carrying with me when I had my winter mountaineering accident. And you can actually see the burned pages from when I tried to make a fire in the middle of a blizzard in the winter. And when I was making the fire, I happened to just grab pages out of the book randomly. I figure it's better to save my life. I can always buy another guidebook. And just by pure chance, I happened to burn the page that's about winter mountaineering in the Kansai area. As I was trying to survive a night in a blizzard in the mountains of Kansai. Here's another Kansai book called the Kansai 100 Best. You can see the competition between the different publishers, right? This is the best 100 from the Blue Guides, the best 100 from JTP Publishing. There's also a guidebook which I forgot to bring, Kansai Hyakumei on the 100 mountains of the Kansai area. There's a big A4 size published by Yamato Keigoku. Because of the A4 size, the binding came apart, so all the pages are kind of everywhere. This is probably the book that I recommend the most if you're living in Kansai. This is called the Hikes That You Can Do From The Train Station. There's 50 courses in here. I haven't actually done all of these, but this includes a lot of stuff that you can just hike straight from the station. If you're a really hardcore Kansai hiker, Yamato Keikoku has 250 mountains of Kansai. These maps are black and white, a little bit harder to read, but this has a lot of recommended mountains that you can climb. Also, if you're into night hiking, there's a night hike guide for the mountains of Kansai. This is a smaller publisher, I believe. I bought this book not because I want to climb all these mountains in the dark, but I like the photos. There are so many guidebooks today. I just want to talk about a couple of series that will maybe help you if you're trying to, if you're not based in Kansai and you're trying to buy a book. 
First, if you want to climb the Nihon Shikaku Meizan, you may want to go to the source and get Fukata Kuya's original Japanese text, which looks like this. I'll give you a bit of background reading about the 100 mountains of Japan. And then, if you want to climb the 100 mountains of Japan, all three of the big publishers publish their own series. So this is the one from JTB Publishing. Really good maps. Very good quality. This is the one from Yamato Keikoku. Same kind of style. And this is the one from Shobuncha. When I climbed the Hyakumeizan, I was actually using these Shobuncha books. So I was able to mark off the mountains on my list based on these. The thing about Japanese guidebooks is you actually don't really need to be able to read a lot of Japanese to be able to use these guidebooks. I hardly ever read the descriptions. I just look at the maps. The maps are kind of the most important thing in here. So if you can kind of read the map and figure out what the name of the nearest station is or the name of the trailhead is and a little bit about the access, that's pretty much all you need. If you live in other parts of Japan, I highly, highly, highly recommend this series from Yamato Kekoku. This is a series for all 47 prefixtures. There is a book for every single prefixture. This is the one for Nagano. And usually each book has about 50 to 60 different hikes in each prefixture. I have about 20 of these, I think. I bought a lot of these on sale, actually, because this is the old book. They updated the book recently to a different cover. And so these were kind of out of stock and out of print, and these were sold kind of cheaply. If you want to walk the Tokai Shizenhoro, there's a guidebook series for this. The book could use better maps. I can, cannot make heads or tails of these maps. If you want to climb the 100 famous Fuji lookalikes in Japan, there's a guidebook for you. I think there are 400 or so Fuji lookalikes in Japan. This just includes kind of the 100 best. I also have a couple of other Hyakumeizan related books. This is for the Nihyakumeizan. So when I finished climbing the Hyakumeizan, I thought I was going to climb the Nihyakumeizan. So I started kind of doing that and then I gave up because it's too expensive. So I gave up on the Nihyakumeizan and there's also this series from Yamato Goku, which has the all 300 of the famous mountains. So if you want to climb the 100, 200, and 300, you can use these. The only foreigner to have climbed the 300 mountains is a woman living in Toyama called Yamaholic. And she, I believe she may have given me this book series. So shout out to the Yamaholic. She also gave me this book, the Toyama 100 Mountains, which I believe that the Yamaholic has almost finished climbing all of these. And my final book that I'd like to recommend to you, if you are really, really, really hardcore hiker, this one was also gifted to me by the Yamaholic. This is from Yamato Keikoku, and this is called the 1000 Mountains of Japan. So if 100 mountains is not enough for you, you can multiply that by 10. It's mostly kind of a picture book with just a listing of the mountains, but you can use this as a guide if you want to climb all of these thousand recommended mountains in Japan. It's been estimated that there's about 15,000 different mountains in Japan. So even if you climbed a mountain every single day, it would take you pretty much your whole life and you still wouldn't be able to finish all of the mountains, depending on how long you lived and how much you can keep up hiking. Well, that's it for this series about Japanese guidebooks. When you go to your nearest bookstore, Japanese bookstore or Japanese outdoor shop, you can find some of these books or you can try to buy them on Amazon or Yahoo Auction if they're out of print. So don't be intimidated if you can't read or speak or write Japanese. You can still use these books with a little bit of help from either a friend or some translation software. Thanks for watching.